Hey, Adam Savage in my cave with a one day build. <sighs> Most of my one day builds are discrete objects that you can see in front of you both as I'm working on them and once I am finished. This one day build is neither of those. Um, for starters, just to give the, lay the groundwork, this is my table saw. And this is the, uh, the inside of my table saw and sawdust and dust from aluminum and Delrin and things that I cut gathers in here. Uh, but it doesn't just gather in here. For the longest time, I've had ribbed hose that goes out of this up to a dust collector up in my loft. But recently, well, wait a second. So that was the primary mode of dust collection I had in this shop. I could turn on the dust collector and it would suck air, kind of, and it would stop this somewhat from creating tons of dust, which is good. I don't use the table saw every day. I don't do woodworking all the time. So for the most part, dust is not a massive problem in this shop unless and until I start to make bigger things out of wood like I did with the end tables over Christmas. Um, that project actually led to this because I ended up filling this shop with dust and I realized I need a better solution than these ribbed tubes that go up to the, up to the dust collector. So I called up my friend Kip uh, and I said, Kip, he knows this kind of stuff. And I was like, dude, does, does a ribbed hose actually inhibit the dust collection tube from being able to move the air? And he said, yeah, actually they do. The ribs cause a, 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 a little bit of, um, what do you call it? Uh, not chaos, but um, turbulence that basically effectively makes the tubing smaller, right? It doesn't have the same amount of suck. So. In this build, I'm going to be replacing the dust collection I currently have with some straight tubes instead of all ribbed hosing. Then I'm gonna be adding a longer leg so I can get dust retrieval over to the other end of my shop. And then finally, because I learned over making the end tables that using an orbital sander is a spectacular way to add dust to your shop, I am gonna drop a couple of pickups from this dust collection system uh, so that I can plug them in, turn it on and plug them into cordless power tools I have and dust collect from those. Yeah, it's, I'm finally gonna become a dust collecting grown up. That's what's gonna happen in this film. Oh, I just Seriously? I thought that would help. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some of my old flexible pipe. What I'm gonna do is cut off lengths of this and use it to attach to the longer stuff and figure out where to put the, the tap ins and, and we'll go from there. Looks like I have just enough. Okay, so now I wanna make a few connector pieces. That's these guys. And use them to join the four footers. Cut them. One, two, three. This should be enough for the upright. Okay. Um, and then 
I'm, a, I'm overestimating on some of these things because I don't need to worry too much about it, but um, I'm super excited to be able to really manage dust in here, I must tell you, because um, over Christmas, man. I mean, I know a lot of you were telling me to wear dust masks and I appreciate that and I have been much more, um, but still, like, we gotta get this going. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. All right. Let's cut out a thirteenth for good luck, shall we? Yes, yeah, said the professionally non superstitious dude. All right. Now, assembly. So I'm going to be doing one, two. This is where this pick point is. So, this Christmas, like that, yeah. rigid, which was my goal. And the fact is, is when it's rigid, it also means that I've got the least amount of bumps in line. These little twist caps for these are fantastic. I really, really like them. Now I'm not going to eliminate all of the ribbing in the hoses of my dust retrieval. I can't quite do that. I still need some flexibility to make certain turns. This one seems to be in pretty good shape. I'll install this as a um, as my connector to the dust retrieval up there in the loft. The trick is to do as much assembly here on the ground as possible, so I don't have to worry about the assembly up there when I'm in the air. In the air. All right, that is good on this. I think I'm gonna, yeah, add one more. Now I'm gonna start to assemble the piece that goes upright right where this hose actually is. Two are the upright. The bottom one will simply connect to the table saw, which already has one of these out at its end. So that's easy. I'm going to report that if you have a choice between green little twisting ernies and the yellow ones to pick the yellow ones, because these are a little bit tougher to make work, but they, they do their job. All right. And then up top, I'm going to need a piece for, oh, right, 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 I've got mine. These are, uh, these are the plywood clamps I made to hold them into the wall. So what's going to happen is I put this around the pipe. And this is just a little ever so slightly open. I kind of preloaded it. So this goes around the pipe like this. And then this gets closed by this. 
We'll see. Hold on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Now that gets closed by that, and that's a nice clamp on the pipe, and that is also a nice mount into the beam behind. Yeah. power strip I forgot I had and I've never used. So we're gonna remove it and I will put it somewhere else. Yep, it goes like that, right? Yes. But yeah I need something up top there. It's true. And it's actually gonna be one of these. I'm going to go up to here. I'm just going to cut this there. And attach that to that. Yep. But how is this going to work? You'll see. You'll see. I, I feel like this is super instructive or this is like the right kind of build because all of our shops are like dial puzzles, you know? Um, this is usually the thing you don't see happening. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see here. This is gonna live like that. Yeah, so one of them is gonna be right there. Great, right, right the shelf. good. So if you live there, uh, then you are going to live. So the first step is this guy. Oh, good. I love it. I uh, guess I can drive right in. I'll write this down one. This one. Yes. Right there. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice and solid. Excellent. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to add one more little doohickey here. I'm assembling one vacuum hose over here so I can pick stuff up. So, uh, heading up to the loft. That I don't need. All right, so that's, get rid of that. But this, yep. Good. So what I need to do here is off the back of my dust retrieval, I need to put a, a splitter. So this will go down to the table saw, and then this will go off to the other part of the shop. So I need this little, I need this little doohickey to sit there. Oh good, I have another one there. Excellent. Now, now if I shove something in there that will keep stuff from getting through it, uh, something that won't actually choke up the heart of this beast. Okay. All right. So, oh. so now what I have, <laughs> this is the line coming up from my table saw. This is the splitter. I've capped it right now just to test the system down there. And that's what we're about to do. We're about to test it. It's super filthy in my shop and I have to move with them. I have to move around a lot of things and get rid of a bunch of stuff in order to like get to the next level of organization. And we're gonna do some of that this weekend. Uh, but, all right, so that's connected in, that's connected up. If I turn on the... Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so I get a little bit of vacuum power out of here. However, let's see what happens. Look at that! Look! That is... Lots, suction lots! Yeah! Oh my... All right, so I'm getting some strength out of this, which patches into my upright. There it patches in down there. I'm getting some strength out of it. This is my vacuum hose hooked into the upright there and my dust retrieval is going. So if I bring it over here, yeah, it does a pretty good job. It's not nearly as uh, vigorous as an actual shop vac. So I don't think this will replace my shop vac, but look at that, yeah, you can pick up, yeah. The first test, not bad, not bad. I need some uh, close. I need some gates to be able to close. But now it's time for me to get uh, this bad boy. Time for me to get this up there. Oh, 
Almost there. Great. Hoi. Doing good. I'm assembling one more pipe length to head from here to the other end to where the uh, disc sander is. Once I get these two up, uh, then I should have just a couple more connections to make and I'm good to go. The nice thing is, is I'm removing so much ribbed hosing. Not, I, I mean, I may actually now, I've seen this in action, I may upgrade to a larger horsepower dust retriever. That's certainly plausible. I also need some automatic gates. I, I, I'm pretty sure someone makes those. I haven't looked in a while, but what I'd like to do is be able to have a gate that automatically opens when I turn on the tool that uses that part of the system, right? That should be doable. It's not, I may have to make one. Uh, right, so. This guy. I am all out of uh, the little clampy clamps, so I'm just going to have to go looking for them. Uh, yes! Well, I thought I had enough clamps, but I don't. Uh, so I'm going to keep on setting this up and I'll use some tape to put it together and then I'll get some clamps and fix it later. I got it. Yeah, that going there. Boy. 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 Dusty, I know. Dusty. Uh, so, dust retrieval. <clears throat> We're in the home stretch. It's a. Uh, I am dressed this way in my NASA coveralls because today human beings landed a piece of human-made equipment on Mars. Human beings landed a human-made piece of equipment on Mars. That's a remarkable sentence. A successful landing on Mars today. Holy cow. So I'm dressed this way, but that's all you needed to know. Now let's get to dust retrieval. So what I currently have is I have the, uh, the clear straight tubes that go up to my, uh, my dust collector. And then that splits off to another set of straight tubes which come across this side of the shop and come down to this guy. Now I made a manual blast gate for this guy years ago, and here it is. Uh, I think I, yeah. So when I open, when I turn on the dust retrieval, I just hit that and I'm ready to go. I don't need to make this one electromechanical at all because it's trivial to just reach down and, and I'm the only one here, so it's fine. 
But when it comes to the table saw, obviously, well, maybe not obviously to you, but for the last 10 years that I've had that table saw, it just sits open, right? I haven't had a, a gate on it. And because of that, I have weak suction in the rest of the system because that one's always open. Um, before I go too far, I want to cover one more thing that I've added, which is a couple of drop lines, a vacuum hose with an outlet so I can sweep stuff up or clean stuff up. Um, I've got another one over here coming off the back of the table saw. And um, ah, I had some corks, so they're nice and corked. Um, but again, because the table saw is open, I'm not getting as much suction as I could. So I need, and I don't want to reach back behind the table saw every single time. I might have already said this in this video. Frankly, it's been a few days since I shot the first part. I can't quite remember what I said I was going to do. But here's the reveal. It's time for an electromechanical blast gate. And that's what this is. Uh, it's a bit of a spendy proposition. This is over a hundred bucks on Amazon. We'll include a link in the comments below. But I have high hopes that this will be a very usable, workable unit. Uh, I suspect that it either works off an electromagnetic signal uh, or a manual signal or just a switch. We'll see. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Electromechanical gate going into the table saw. Let's get into it. We are uh, we're unpacking it. Take a look. This is nice. Feels good. It's nice and robust. Yeah, that's quite lovely. Oh! Ooh! That was neat. Can this, like, cut your fingers off? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, probably could. Uh, so, uh, sorry. Before I even looked at the manual, I noticed uh, what is an eighth-inch stereo, an eighth-inch mini jack here. And I had one. I, I, I always have a few of these. Uh, XLR, stereo, and mono mini jacks that come in handy. I have a whole stash. So I stuck it in, and just plugging it in makes the thing open. Ooh, there it is. All right, so. Oh, okay, this is a whole tool system with inputs that can make many parts of the system work in concert with each other. That's great. But I only need this one, and for that purpose, this... That's all that I need. And what I really need is a momentary, a robust momentary switch. A robust momentary switch. Oh! Oops. Push buttons. I like how low pro that is. What color? Red. Wait. That's going to be my switch. I'm going to make up a little uh, a wire <clears throat> that will go from the switch to my stereo mini jack. And when I hit the switch, it will open the gate. There it is. And then when I hit the switch again, oh, it'll cut my fingers off. I'm never going to have my fingers in the way. It's a nifty little device. I back. All right. Um, time to pull out the table saw itself. Figure out how this guy's going to get uh, mounted up. There we go. Let's see here. All right. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. All right, that's just like that. But how am I going to connect those two to each other? Yeah, a little bit of pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. 
my inclination is to set it up like this. Yeah. So my inclination is to set it up backwards like this. Oh, well, that's it. There we go. Now it's coming around. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, oh, that's a nice stream relief. Oh, um, now they're going to start down. Okay. Yep, I need one other thing here. Um, all right, so here's what I'm planning on doing. Uh, this is, uh, that's gonna that's gonna work itself off. So I'm gonna put in a couple of quarter 20 bolts here that will screw this down and hold it in its orientation. That should provide the extra strength I need. And then I'll hook up this business end of that. Actually, I'm gonna put in a sec, a different one that's a little bit longer so I can move the table so far they're out. And then we'll be uh, ready to test all the parts of my dust retrieval system. These nuts will secure the quarter 23 inches that I've got into the back. Then these nuts will actually properly space the blast gate. Everything will get tightened down in a little bit. And that, yes, see that? And then these get tightened in, but first, but first, ah, oh, 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 yeah, wow, oh, this is working great. I know, I could go get a socket, but by the time I go do that, I'll be done. Oh, nice. Okay. Now the other side. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Good. I'm very pleased. I, I, I always forget. Always. All right. So you can see here that I've got my, I've got this offshoot. Now that the blast gate well, it's currently open, but once I close it, I should get a lot more suction out of this drop line. And then I'm going to use it to clean up some of this mess. But um, first and foremost, I still need to make the switch and connect it up. So that's going to take me a few minutes. Here's my power supply. And I'm just going to secure this. Oh, is it literally just not long enough? All right, we'll do a longy and a shorty. Okay, that should provide some strain relief. And then we're just gonna add a few of these, so.
Hey, that sounded like operation to me. I know, I know it's not that pretty. Pretty isn't necessarily what I'm going for. It's robust, that's for sure. Nice, okay, so let's clear some of this debris. All right, good. So now uh, that this is blocked off, I should get pretty good suction out of this drop line. Let's see. What did God say? I'm gonna turn on my dust retrieval. Oh. Oh, yes. Significant amount. Significant. Here, check this out. Here, check this out. Oh, yeah. Yes! I know. Right, I got my lip caught in a vacuum motor before, but it's a good sound. So we could do our own tested version of an 808. All right, uh, I think we can shut that down. Now it's time to make the switch and install it. The power system is routed from right here all the way down using a set of zip ties. The unit itself is faced away from the world so things can bang into it and won't affect it. Um, as soon as I install the switch, I'm gonna route that cord up and around. Might go that way, not sure. Um, here we go. 12 feet, let's do 12 feet of wire. I've got some solid core speaker wire, which is fine for this. Uh, it's not a very, yeah. It's fine for this. I, uh, I'm not gonna have the back screwed onto this one because I don't have the room for it. Uh, so I'm going to add a bunch of heat shrink, three little layers of it, to give myself some strain relief. All right, let's get that. Up. Oh, I should have done them in order. I can see that now. I can see the arrow over my ways. There is my switch plug. Oh, sorry. There is my switch plug. And uh, I'm going to be installing it using some of these little wire carriers and some uh, uh, sheet metal screws. A little strain relief on there. I'm using these to hold this onto the saw. Got some self tapping sheet metal screws. Okay. Clearly, I need to pre drill. That's it, thank goodness. Okay. All right, we're going around to the other side. Take me to the other side. Oh, there's my wire. Okay. Come on, focus down there. There you go, there's my wire. I gotta go get that wire and thread it out this way. And this is why my switch will go right, right around here. I've got my switch here. 
Oh, right, right, right. So yeah, I'm going to actually solder to the switch a, a couple of leads, and then I'll connect those up because i got to thread this through a hole. Come on. There you go. Ish. Ish. Nice. Nice looking. Uh, so the size of this hole, 0 0.81. 0 0.81, 13 16th, second to last one on there. All right. I am going to put the switch right here. I think that's an ideal spot. And I'm going to do a pre-drill here. Cutting fluid, yeah. Cutting fluid makes such a difference. The moment of truth. I'm gonna hit this button and I should hear my blast gate. Okay, I'm showing you the blast gate inside the table saw. There it is, there it is. comes the business end of this dust retrieval system, which is my disc sander. I discovered over Christmas making the end tables that this makes a tremendous amount of dust. So I would like to, I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna sand a little bit. Oh, you should actually see this. And then I'm gonna try it without it. Oh, 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 there's one other thing I wanna see here too. Okay. I just want to see the difference between the suction with the gate open and closed. Yeah? All right, here we go. On. Now that's a full suction. If I open the gate. Oh yeah, it's like half the suction. Yeah. Okay, so if I plug this into my disc sander, We're going with 40 grit. We're going to make a lot of dust. We're going to try. Outstanding! For a 40 grit where I took off that much, no dust at all. But it's not the only pick point in the shop. So let's try out the other one. Let me give you a control. All right. So it may be <laughs> Is that my look, is that enough evidence that it's dusty? I sneeze right away. All right. 
Uh, that was my control. Here comes the real thing. Fell out. Whoops. But it works. It works. Cap this up. There we go. One more part of the retrieval to test. One more part to test. Dust retrieval on. Opening this glass gate. It's all going. I can smell the tiniest bit of dust. That machine produces a crap ton of it. <sighs> Dudes and dudettes. My table saw now has dust retrieval. So does my disc sander. And over there. So does my uh, uh, small handheld sanders. This is great. This is a whole new thing. Pick points dropping from the ceiling with dust retrieval. I'm hoping not to sneeze again in here. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm very, very... I guess the next thing is um, a air, an airbrush, uh, an, a small movable airbrush event. I've been thinking about a design in my head for a while, uh, but that's another build. Thank you guys for joining me for this dust retrieval build. Congratulations to human beings for landing a spacecraft on Mars. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. Thank you for watching that entire video. If you'd like to support us further, you can head over to the Tested Store. Links are in the comments below and you can buy things like our demerit badges. You've heard of merit badges. These are the opposite. This one here is for measuring once and cutting twice. We went back and forth whether to measure once and curse twice, because that also happens. We went with the cut twice. And this is one of my all-time favorites. This is when you accidentally release the mysterious blue smoke that makes all electronics work, and then they no longer work. You can't release that smoke. Head over to our store, get yourself some demerit badges, and we will see you next time.